The morning after, the sun still rose, but Washington is forever changed. November is coming! November is coming! The high temple of democracy wrenched apart by what might have been an arcane and ritual appointment of a new Supreme Court judge that instead became a hotbed of hatred and spite, released by a woman's decades-long hurt and a man's wounded honour. On his way to vote, the Republican Senator Jeff Flake, who decided to support Judge Kavanaugh, became an intimate focus for anger, approached by a woman speaking her truth. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You're telling me that my assault doesn't matter, that what happened to me doesn't matter, and that you're going to let people who do these things into power. That's what you're telling me when you vote for him. Inside the Judiciary the Committee hearing, Democrats sat numb as decisions were swiftly taken around them to rush to a vote and possible confirmation before the Senate. The Outside the room, they raged against side. the process which they'd failed to stop. The it's been pushing and pushing and ramming this thing through because they have the power, as opposed to the integrity to say, let the American people know what's about to happen, have transparency in the system, have integrity in the system. The wave of anger channeled on both sides of politics today reflects a tone set by Judge Kavanaugh when he entered the hearing room late yesterday. This confirmation process has become a national disgrace. You have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. He is, he says, a victim of a conspiracy. This whole two-week effort has been a calculated and orchestrated political hit, fueled with apparent pent-up anger about President Trump and the 2016 election, revenge on behalf of the Clintons, and millions of dollars in money from outside left-wing opposition groups. He says he's a man wrongly accused. I am innocent of this charge. I intend no ill will to Dr. Ford and her family. The other night, Ashley and my daughter Liza said their prayers. And little Liza, all of 10 years old, said to Ashley, we should pray for the woman. It's a lot of wisdom from a 10-year-old. We mean, we mean no ill will. He is a judge abandoning judiciousness and neutrality for intemperate rage directed at the Democrats. I will not be intimidated into withdrawing from this process. You've tried hard. You've given it your all. No one can question your effort. But your coordinated and well-funded effort to destroy my good name and destroy my family will not drive me out. One wonders how his accuser, you, Dr. You Christine Blasey Ford, might have been perceived had she displayed the same wounded the belligerence, but she, the alleged victim, side. couldn't afford to be much. angry. Be Brett and Mark came into the bedroom and locked the door behind them. Have you ever been alone in a room with Dr. Ford and Mark Judge? No. He began running his hands over my body and grinding into me. Have you ever ground or rubbed your genitals against Dr. Ford? No. Brett groped me and tried to take off my clothes. Have you ever tried to remove her clothes? No. I tried to yell for help. When I did, Brett put his hand over my mouth to stop me from yelling. Have you ever covered Dr. Ford's mouth with your hand? No. The Republican majority supporting Judge Kavanaugh argue there is no corroboration of Dr. Ford's story. But the Democrats say there could be if only the FBI were directed to interview those involved and cross-reference their stories. Why would you resist that kind of investigation? Surely, Senator Dick Durbin asserted, if you're innocent, Judge Kavanaugh, you would want those witnesses to be heard. Judge Kavanaugh, will you support an FBI investigation right now? I, I will do whatever... The committee wants to... Personally, do you think that's the best thing for us to do? You want to answer? He yes, did answer right eventually, book, saying he uh, always wanted a uh, hearing. You want this seat? Senator Durbin's line of questioning wound another man into a state of high emotion, this time Senator Lindsey Graham, previously a detractor of President Trump's, but suddenly a White House favorite. This is the most unethical sham 
since I've been in politics. And if you really wanted to know the truth, you sure as hell wouldn't have done what you've done to this guy. Are you a gang rapist? No. You're looking for a fair process? You came to the wrong town at the wrong time, my friend. Perhaps emboldened, when Judge Kavanaugh was probed over his drinking, his response bordered on contemptuous. Uh, was there ever a time when you drank so much that you couldn't remember what happened or part of what happened the night before? No, I, I, no. I remember what happened, and I think you've probably had beers, Senator, and, and so, so I, you're saying there's never been a case where you drank so much that you didn't remember what happened the night before or part of what happened? That's, you're asking about yeah, blackout. I don't know. Have you? Could you answer the question, Judge? I just, so you, that's not happened. Is that your answer? Yeah, and I'm curious if you have. I have no drinking problem, Judge. Yeah, nor do I. Okay. All across America, the hearing played out to the people on trains, in planes, during chemotherapy sessions. There was a moment to witness, and for some, too much to remember. Yes, um, I'm a 76-year-old woman. This call to a national broadcaster by a woman recalling her own experience of sexual violence. This brings back so much pain. Phone calls to the National Sexual Assault Hotline increased by 147% during the hearing. A reminder, this is not only political, but personal. A moment of American history overflowing with shame, underwritten by rage, gilded by ambition. So the committee has now convened and held its vote. As we understand it, it's all going on even as we're on air. But there was a last minute interruption. There was a possibility, it seemed for a moment, that the Democrats' efforts to try and get an FBI inquiry, inquiry or at least to get a delay before this goes to the floor of the Senate might have worked. It came in the form of Senator Jeff Flake, a Republican senator. Let's hear what he had to say. And I think it would be uh, proper to delay the floor vote uh, for up to but not more than one week. Uh, in order to let the FBI um, continue uh, to do an investigation limited in time and scope uh, to the current allegations that are there. Senator Jeff Flake, now it seems that effort by him was in fact unsuccessful. He ultimately voted with his other Republican colleagues and has now pushed the confirmation through uh, to the Senate floor, likely to be held next week. We're just getting news of this, trying to work this out. Kerry Kupek. Kerry is a spokeswoman for the White House and led the team working on Judge Kavanaugh's nomination. Is that what you understand, that this is now being shepherded through, that the committee has done? That's my understanding. And like you said, this is breaking news happening as we're standing here. Uh, but we're pleased the vote is moving forward. I mean, you're pleased, but are you pleased with the way this happened? I mean, this has been an incredibly partisan, difficult, emotional experience. You've had extraordinary scenes in that hearing room. There's a great deal of anger in the streets of America about the way that this has happened. This isn't what the White House wanted, is it? Well, I was sitting in the hearing yesterday and it, it was emotional. It was. It was It was intense. And I, you know, I echo President Trump's words when he said that Judge Kavanaugh's testimony was powerful. It was riveting. It was honest. And we really didn't learn much after yesterday's hearing. But what about Dr. Ford's testimony? I mean, can I just say that as sure. an observer watching sure. Judge Kavanaugh, for someone who's going to be on the Supreme Court bench, I would have expected someone who is very calm under pressure, uh, who is not angry, who does not display partisanship. I mean, he walked in a very angry man. Is that the person you want on the Supreme Court? Well, I, I think as a human being, all of us would be angry if our life as we know, it was on the line, and and that's and that's what we were his looking at yesterday. His life wasn't on the line. He, a, a job was on the line. No, it's more than that because his reputation has been smeared through the mud at this point. It, it's a lot bigger at this point than obviously just this seat. And look, Dr. Ford, she was sympathetic, uh, she was sincere, but there were a number of inconsistencies in her testimony. And at the end of the day, here's what we still know. It is not a he says, she says situation. It's a she says versus what four people have said, because all four people who she said well, were we can, there. We can get into no, the weeds well, of this. We said. can look at these four. But they, those had, four people have said. But a finish. number of those people have since they, come out and said that they support her view. No, but listen, those four people have all submitted testimony, submitted statements to the Senate Judiciary Committee, and the penalty for lying to the committee is a felony. That, that's pretty bad. And they've all said, 
we have no idea what this gathering is even about. We don't remember anything like this at all, including her lifelong best friend. She said that as well. But it was the lifelong best friend who has since come out and said that she's very sorry she hadn't managed to tell the truth and that the lawyer had made the statement. Oh, no, the, the best friend has never changed her position that the gathering as described did not happen to but her knowledge all, and that she doesn't know Judge Kavanaugh. But if you're so confident in this, why not just go to the FBI? Why not just let it go for one week longer? What harm, I mean, does that do? Given that Judge Kavanaugh's reputation, as you say, has been on the line, isn't it better that he goes to the bench, if you like, cleared by the, from these kind of accusations? Well, a couple of things. Judge Kavanaugh yesterday said that he was willing to do whatever the committee wanted him to do. So let's be very clear about that. Secondly, but uh, the, president, the president could have said, OK, stop this. That's what George H.W. Bush did. He said, stop this when the Anita Ford hearing was going on and said, let's get an FBI inquiry. Well, the details are actually very different in the Anita Hill situation because at that point, the allegations were made privately as they're, as they're supposed to. And what Dr. Ford, to be fair, attempted to do. And at that point, that's when they reopened the investigation, uh, did a few interviews, and that's when they had the hearing. And the hearing was had only after that information was leaked and at that point it was public because remember it's okay. critical for FBI investigations to remain private because that ensures that people will speak with candor and speak forthrightly. But the big picture is that you're happy with the way that this went and you're thrilled that this judge is going to the Supreme Court. Oh we 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 stand with Judge Kavanaugh Kerry. and we are confident that he will be confirmed. Terry Kupak thank you very much. That's all from us for now. Uh, back to the studio with Chris. Well, joining me now via the internet is Samantha Gary, an old friend of Dr. Ford's, who's been at her side throughout the hearing. And you were there yesterday. I mean, what is her frame of mind? Well, immediately after the hearing, she was very relieved to have this put behind her. And uh, we spent some time together yesterday afternoon and we kind of watched her. Um, come back to herself and smile and see, you know, this, this great burden off of her. Um, however, this turns out from here forward, she did her duty. She, she saw this through and, um, I don't think she realizes yet because she's been so focused on the hearings yesterday, what a tremendous contribution she's made to women across our country and perhaps across the world in shining some light on this very dark, difficult um, subject of sexual violence in our cultures. Right, but the committee have voted it through to the next stage. It's gone through 1110, it's now gonna face a vote in the Senate. It looks like he's going to join the Supreme Court. Where does that leave you? Well, I think the question is, where does that leave our country? Um, everybody agrees this has been a terrible process. Everything about it has been shameful, I think, um, with the exception of Chrissy, who has retained her dignity and her resolve throughout, who tried to do the right thing at every step of the process. Um, so she can, she can walk uh, away from this with a clear conscience. I think there are a lot of people in the political world who have, uh, or won't have that luxury. Uh, there are a lot of people who have been, um, uh, you know, playing the, the chess game of this because they have a very clear intended outcome that they've been trying to achieve all along. But won't she also walk away as the woman who ultimately wasn't believed by the Senate? Um, she... She was... She wasn't... She was believed by a lot of people. Um, she wasn't believed by some key senators who were not inclined to believe. And frankly, I'm not even sure you can say they didn't believe her. I think that, um, you know, the political force of what they're trying to achieve with Justice Kavanaugh is probably bigger than uh, their own predilections to uh, believing or not believing. And in some way, I think they showed their hand in that of not even wanting to know the truth by, for, you know, by not asking for the proper uh, background opening the background um, through the FBI and really getting to the bottom of, you, of you, details here. Do you think ultimately it's been worth it if, if he ends up on the Supreme Court? You know, that's a good question. Um, and I haven't asked Chrissy that, but I would imagine that, uh, you know, what she said yesterday is if she had thought that she was just throwing herself in front of a, a train that was going to end up at the station anyways, I'm not sure... She was interested in doing that. It's uh, been such a terrible disruption to her and her family and such a frightening experience overall. Um, but I hope that if, if 
when all the dust settles, regardless of where Justice Kavanaugh is a year from now, um, that she and others will see that uh, her courage is going to reshape how our country deals with this issue and hopefully pave the way for far more women to be heard in the future and, and change this culture of sexual violence, which appears to be endemic based on the uh, tremendous number of women who've come forward with their stories and were touched by her testimony yesterday. Well, earlier today, I spoke to Mark Osler, who went to Yale Law School with Judge Kavanaugh, and I began by asking if he believed the testimony against his former classmate. I did. I found her to be credible. I think that there needs to be more investigation before conclusions are made. And so this has actually changed your mind about it, has it? Yes, I signed a letter supporting Judge Kavanaugh, um, who was my classmate and my friend, um, before the hearings, uh, the first set of hearings. And I signed that letter in large part because I talked to people that practice in front of him, who said that he was a good and fair judge. I, my own personal recollections of, of him were very positive. Um, but that did change with these allegations being made. I mean, I'm sure people will stand up and, and listen to what you're saying and say, well, he's a Democrat, there's obviously some history here, this is political. Well, if I was being political about it, I wouldn't have signed a letter of support for him when he was nominated, <laughs> I think. Um, which, and so being one of the few people that supported him in the first place, I hope would rebut the idea that, that I'm coming from, from a, a place of politics. Brett Kavanaugh's former classmate at Yale. Well, while we've been on air, President Trump has spoken about the evidence both Dr. Christine Blasey Ford and Judge Brett Kavanaugh gave to the Senate committee. Here's what he said. I thought her testimony was very compelling, and she looks like a very fine woman to me. Very fine woman. And I thought that Brett's testimony, likewise, was really something uh, that I haven't seen before. It was incredible. It was an incredible moment, I think, in the history of our country. Well, let's go back now to our Washington correspondent, Kylie Morris. Kylie. Chris, a quick update on Jeff Flake's actions here. It seems he is very effectively using his leverage. Although uh, the motion has gone through to the floor of the Senate, he is saying that he won't be able to necessarily support that vote unless there's a hearing by the F or an investigation by the FBI into these allegations against Judge Kavanaugh. So potentially he's put a spoke in the wheels. He doesn't have a power, enough power to do that on his own, but he's now by, been joined by the senator from Alaska, Lisa Murkowski, which means the president has a big decision to make because he's the one who has to call an FBI investigation. Now, I'm joined now by Maya Raju, who's from the National Women's Law Center. Uh, there has been a lot of talk, Maya, about this moment being a flashpoint, a kind of a Me Too flashpoint mo moment. Is that, does that ring true to your experience, what you're hearing? I think that's right, Kylie. We're approaching the one year anniversary of the Me Too movement. And I think yesterday we heard two very different messages. First, we heard an empowering message from the example of Dr. Blasey Ford who took her very private trauma and was willing to talk about it on national television and to the Senate Judiciary Committee and empowered millions of survivors across the country when they saw her bravery. On the other hand, by refusing to call for a fair and impartial investigation, by holding that sham hearing with two witnesses, by pushing forward the vote this morning, the committee is sending the message that women's lives and experiences are less important than the careers of powerful men. The interesting thing is that it was Jeff Flake who we saw in the lift earlier today, mm -hmm. who was being approached to and spoken to by women who were survivors of other sexual assault. They've traveled to Washington, DC. They were the ones speaking to him. And within about half an hour, he came out and said that he was going to ask for a delay. So potentially, it's not the way that anyone would have chosen, but potentially women's voices in the end may have been heard. That's possible, and I think it's important to remember that survivors and women are, and women and other survivors are the ones who have been leading this movement for the last year. So it's only fitting that their experiences, their rage, their demand to be treated with respect and to be heard is what's driving this. I mean, we've heard of lots of women sharing very personal experiences. There's been there's been a disturbing peak in the number of calls to the That's National right. Domestic Violence Hotline, for example. 
That's right. Yesterday alone, there was a dramatic increase in calls to the National Sexual Assault Hotline. Um, you heard people calling in to C-SPAN during the hearings and telling their stories, some people for the first time in more than 70, 50 years. They're holding on to a lot of pain, but feeling like Dr. Blasey's Ford example um, was so empowering. That. But as I said, I think it remains to be seen um, the impact of that very discouraging message. We much also depends heard on yesterday. next week, doesn't Absolutely. it? Maya Raji, thank you so much for joining thank us. You.